In this episode of Science of the Movies, we're breaking all the rules. Hit the gas, bro! The man who invented the Steadicam puts me in the driver's seat. Good luck following me. Hey, wait a second. I meet an unfortunate end, but live to tell about it. How bad is it? It doesn't look good. And science fiction becomes science fact. I feel like I'm watching Minority Report. Say goodbye to boring old multiplexes. It's like the magic trick of, like, the 21st century here. The future is now on Science of the Movies. Filmmakers have experimented with a myriad of ways of getting the camera moving since the earliest days of film. Why? Because moving shots look cool. They also really bring you in and make you feel like you're part of the action. And not every experiment has succeeded. I'm, I'm sorry. Can we cut? Well, what's going on? It, it's not you, man. Does it have anything to do with me? No, it's not you. OK, well, then I'm going to go get a soy latte. Parker. Filmmakers have experimented with a myriad of ways of getting the camera moving since the earliest days of film. Why? Because moving shots look cool, they also really bring you in and make you feel like you're part of the action. From dollies to cranes to simply putting a camera on your shoulder, they've pretty much tried everything. Now, not every experiment has succeeded, but we're about to check out one system that not only worked, it literally changed the way movies are made. Hi, I'm here to see Garrett Brown. Uh, he's actually right there. Garrett? No wonder that shot looks so good. Hey, Garrett, I'm Nar. Hey, Nar, how are you? Garrett Brown is the guy who invented the Steadicam. And without Steadicam, we wouldn't have some of the most classic scenes in movie history. This scene from The Shining scared the pants off of me. And it was Garrett who got these shots. He was chasing that poor kid through the snow around those corners and now, the Grand Jedi Master of Steadicam is going to show us how it's done. I'm stoked. Are you going to show me around? Let's go. This is Steadicam Command Central, where they make the rigs that shot Rocky, The Shining, Goodfellas, and dozens of other movies in the last four decades. And it all started in 1976, when Garrett got frustrated with the limitations of moving cameras. Garrett, what was the problem with the way cameras moved prior to the Steadicam that you were looking to solve? Cameras had to be on wheels to make a smooth moving shot. When I first got in the business, I had to buy a huge 800-pound dolly to put my stupid little camera on. People go places where you couldn't use a dolly. The dramas take place, you know, across doorsteps and up and down steps and over rough ground. Right. I mean, on rough ground, you can use a dolly and lay rails, but then you can't look straight ahead, you can't look behind. I mean, that's crazy. It just seemed to me it was so restrictive. So dollies didn't have the ninja fluidity and stealth he wanted. But just going commando, picking up the camera and doing handheld, wasn't the solution either. No offense, guys. Handheld didn't really do it because, you know, the center of gravity of this thing is inside it. Center of gravity is the point where the weight of an object is concentrated. When you try to balance a pencil on the tip of your finger, you know, instead of doing something boring like work, the point where it balances is the center of gravity. Every time you pick up a camera, you're throwing it off balance, and every move you make shows up on screen. I think I give myself the most credit for just sitting there and going, hang on, you know, this doesn't have to be like this. How can I, bit by bit, get this thing to float and not be influenced by my, all my human motions? Garrett was a filmmaker, not an engineer, but he solved the problem using old school physics 101. I'm no artist, but I'll, I'll bring you through the early thought process here. Right, I mean, here, here's okay. a camera, right? Garrett moved the center of gravity outside of the camera by attaching counterweights below it. Now you can hold it, but it's still basically floating in space. Plus, you, you need something in here called a gimbal so that when you're holding it, it doesn't influence its angle. That's what they used to use for lamps, you know, on ships where the, the lamp didn't move and the ship moved. Right, right gotcha. It's too heavy to hold, so we need some kind of an arm. This took uh, years to figure out. Oh, you know what? Let me just show you the real thing. All right, come on. <laughs> one thing that we could show you is, and this is very graphic, this is the one for light camcorders. So these are the two counterweights, I take it, here? Yeah, now this is the center of gravity of this camera is now right down here. This is a gimbal, which is what we were talking about with the diagram. But when you do this, just this, it's magic. You know, this thing wants to keep pointed where it's pointed. 
It doesn't care what you do, yeah? As you can see in Garrett's early test footage and home movies from the 70s, the early prototype wasn't quite so slim and sexy. It weighed 60 pounds, and the Borg eyepiece was actually the monitor, connected to the camera with heavy fiber optic cables. Now, Steadicam comes in all shapes and sizes. Garrett is suiting up in a rig. I love the sound of Velcro in the morning. That can hold a 70-pound film camera. There are five smaller models, too, for lightweight film and video cameras. Let me introduce you to Mr. Charles Pappert, living master hey, at the Howard. Steadicam. Hey, Charles. Charles has operated Steadicam shots on over 60 movies and TV shows, all without breaking a sweat. Charles will demo the Steadicam Pilot, which is the smallest full rig. Oh, okay. And yet it does the same thing as these big guys do. The Pilot can carry cameras between 2 and 10 pounds, but has all the precision and control of the bigger rigs. Now you can use this thing all day. I mean, it's no effort at all to use it. I've had it on since breakfast. <laughs> so can you show me what these bad boys can do? Oh, yeah. Excellent. Come on. Make it so. Enough talk. It's time for a steady cam duel to see if the student has become the master. See what we're doing? The movement is so smooth. Speed it up a little. Yeah. Nice backwards move there, Charles. Very good. Hey, Nar. Yeah. Walk toward us now. OK. Towards you? Yeah. All right. You've seen this one a million times, yeah. good fellows, et cetera. Yeah. A little faster. They're all around me. I can't shake them. No, wait. They're actually leaving me in the dust. No! All right, you win. You're faster than I am. Charles has been doing this for a couple decades himself. He is indeed a steady cam sensei. It seems like an art form. It's a lot of different things at once. It's a little bit like a ballet mixed in with playing a musical instrument, mixed in with being a linebacker. So can you show off some of the moves that you could do with it, maybe? Well, absolutely. I mean, the obvious thing here is we're walking, and the camera is, is perfectly steady. But of course, running it is exactly the same thing. You know, we don't see any kind of footsteps in there. Are there shots that you can only do with a steady cam? Well, absolutely. I mean, we're in the realm with the, we have all the agility of a handheld camera. But unlike handheld, of course, the, you know, the shot is so much smoother, so you have to compare it more to a dolly. But a dolly has a really hard time going around corners, you know, making these arcing moves. So it's not distracting the viewer. It doesn't scream footsteps in handheld. It just gets the lens from one place to the other without being uh, sort of held up by the geography of the space. As cool as the crazy, long, chest-busting endurance shots are, that's not all a steady cam can do. It's such a subtle instrument. The challenge of moving incredibly slowly and doing these super precise moves. So the, the smaller, down. more subtle, slow shots are... are They're actually what? harder than just sort of barreling and going, run, you know, chasing through space like this. What's it feel to have that on? Is, it, is there a weight on this side of the body? Well, you know, the Steadicam Pilot in particular is so lightweight. It's unbelievable. I, you know, I forget that I have the thing on. It's just hanging out there. I could be having a sandwich now, and, I, and it wouldn't make any difference. It's just an extra cyborg arm. Yeah. I want a cyborg arm. Now that I've uh, seen how this works and how big it is, and now I've seen you get you and uh, Charles playing around with it, I'm like, I don't know. Well, why don't you try it? That's Come what on. I was waiting Come for. On. Up next, there's no crying in Steadicam. No, seriously, should I have breathing room? No. Really? Breathing room is overrated. <laughs>